overflowing life is the life of the king for his subject overflowing life is the life of the shepherd for his flock overflowing life is the life of God for his people So overflow is not the figment of imagination. Overflow is not just word or an issue of semantics. Overflow is the reality of the king for his subjects. Overflow is the plan of the shepherd for his flow, for his flock. Overflow is the plan of God for his children. As I sat there, this is a season that like you don't get to prepare for message. It's a very fluid, a very dynamic and flowing moment. So you get to listen every moment. You may have a, a, number, a direction, but you wait for details. As I sat there, I had a whispering in my spirit to let you know because we are in a generation, we are in a culture and a time that there is so much questioning around God and godliness. There is a judgment, a general judgment against God and godliness. So God is under judgment. Many people are judging whether there is a God, whether there should be a God in the first place, whether there is need for a God. And many believers, without knowing, uh, succumbing, you know, submitting to such cultures and trends and thoughts, what is the need for a God? There is God. And God is king. And from the beginning of creation, the Bible gives us a vision of the world. Geography gives you a science, gives you a vision of the earth, the geography, the gravos of the geo, geo earth, the gravos, the writings, the knowledge, the studies of the earth. Physics, forces, physical things. So physics gives you a knowledge about the physical reality, the physical property and elements of the earth. The bios, biology, gives you a scientific understanding according to the human mind of the bios of life as bios. What we share with other mammals, what we share with other stuffs who walk about, who breathe, whether they are seen or too little to be seen. The economics, our cost numbers, gives us some understanding of the workings, of the arrangement of the household of the world. Oikos, no more. Economics is just from two Greek words, oikos, house. Nomos, the arrangement, ordering. So economics looks at a nation as a household, a national economy. It's the arrangement of the nation as a household in apportioning resources to different aspects and people and things and issues in the large household that a nation is. Global economy looks at the whole globe, the whole world as an icos, an oikos rather, a household, a state, a state, the economy of the state reduces the state to a household. So there is 
personal economy, a family economy. And it has to do with arrangements and distribution of resources to cater for people in the household, for the welfare, the management of the scarce resources, for the well-being of people within the household, whether as a home, as a state, as a nation, or an institution. All of these is founded upon the fact that there is government, there is, an, there is rulership, the rulership of the household. The rulership of the household, the father, the mother. So it becomes the responsibility of the father and the mother to design the economy of the house, of the family. So in a state, everything being equal, that the leadership of the state overseeing the economy of the household which the state is, in terms of the management, the arrangements, the distribution of resources, tangible and intangible, for the welfare of the people within the household, whether as a state. So wherever you talk about economy, there is leadership. Wherever you talk about leadership, there is economy. Economy, economy being the arrangement concerning the welfare of people under the leader at the national level. At the international level, it means the coming together of the, of the sovereign nations submitting for mutual benefits among the nations. And so if you look at God who made all things, if you look at the book of Genesis, in chapter 1, in chapter 2, you see God as president. You see God as the monarch. And you see in the creation, God is setting a direction as the chief economist. Making available the resources that the earth will need. Light, water, vegetation, and all of this. And then a steward, one like him, one who will be president under him. One who will be governor under him. He made man in his image and likeness. Male and female, he made them. In his image and likeness. So man, over the affairs of the garden, of the earth that was established by God, was to be the chief economist, the king, the monarch, the president. So God, from the very first page of the Bible, God is revealed as king, as ruler. And the Bible then is the, is the book of the economy of God. Say, the economy of God. Come on, come on, come on. Please, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't let me leave you behind. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Stretch your hand towards me. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. I hold the hand of the angel of revelation today. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Say, I hold the hand of the angel of revelation today. I accept to be guided to be taken from where I am to the overflow of God. Say, my mind is released. Say, my spirit is released. Say, my body is released. Say, I am free. I follow. I hear. And I make sense of what I hear by the Holy Spirit as it affects my personal economy. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, in every area. Say, I submit to the government of God in the revelation of the world. I permit the angel of revelation today bring to my life God's portion for me. Lift up your two hands. Say, bring to my life God's portion for me. Lift up your two hands and receive. Say, I receive health from God's portion for me. I receive wealth from God's portion for me. Say, I receive strength. I receive sight. I receive all that I need. Everything pertaining to life and godliness. I receive. In Jesus' name. Lift up your two hands toward me, Father, in the name of Jesus.
Let the light of your face shine upon everyone here. Please, Lord, don't let your word fall to the ground. In Jesus' name. Okay. It's so important you follow. Because I sat down there, the Holy Spirit just whispered to me. Because what the flesh is telling you and human knowledge is telling you is that there is no need for a God. We are in charge of our lives. Beyond us, there is nothing. So that means what I'm not able to do by my physical, by my physical ability and stretching, that one is eternally not available to me. But the Bible, as the book of God's economy, tells us otherwise. Number one, the Bible presents God as king, as honor, as lord, as ruler, and good one, shepherd. God reveals himself as shepherd. In civilized nations, nations that are civilized, that understand civil governance, leaders are not called rulers. They are stewards. So you see in nations, when a, a president is being sworn in, you see something akin to what deacons wear in churches. It's a sign that you are a servant and a steward. That is actually the revelation of leadership under God. The man is a steward under the sovereign. That means even in those nations, civilized nations, and beyond just wearing that, who understand that and walk in that understanding without knowing they are affirming God. Though the people are the ones they serve, but they are serving under the one who appoints them. So they are stewards. So there is God who is king. Say there is God who is king. There is king who, there is God who is Lord. There is God who is the president. There is God who is the sovereign. Who is the chief economist. Say as a father, if you are a father, a mother, a son, a daughter, you say it applies, applies to you. Say, as a minister, I'm a minister, so, so as what? I am not absolutely in charge. What I cannot achieve can still be achieved. What my ability cannot do can still be done. So this year, I'm not expecting to do all that my ability is able to do, I'm expecting to do. All that God's ability is able to do through me. Do you believe that? Rise to your feet. Say this year, by the mandate of overflow, what I am doing, what I will do, what I'm capable of doing, far exceeds what my intellect, what my ability, what my creativity, what my connection, my knowledge are able to achieve for me. So I achieve in God and by God for he is my king. In Jesus name be seated. I was raised a Catholic and a Catholic priest. In a traditional understanding in that circle, and using the Catholic traditional theological setting to, to relate with other mainstream churches, serving God is a duty and sometimes issue of expectation of the intervention of God at very radical level cannot be something that is talked about seriously. Suffering from, for God is really, really exalted. You suffer for God. You carry your cross. So sometimes this suffering and pain can easily be understood as the will of God for you. So you are carrying the cross. And then your soul is purified. And when you go to heaven, you shall be rewarded. Now, 
that thinking is not the thinking of the Bible. That thinking comes from the European culture from which religion came to us in Africa. By the time religion, Christianity came to Africa, rationalism had taken over Christianity. So Christianity became a rational thing. So if you go to Europe, that is why the church in Europe is like this. So the human reason that makes God almost irrelevant to the affairs of men. And you are not expected to worry God too much over things. Rather, you endure things. And then when you go to heaven, you wake up. But God, first of all, reveals himself in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, God has not told us that he has changed. He said, I, the Lord, I change not. So if you look at the Old Testament, from the people of Israel in Egypt, when there was famine, God, because he is king and sovereign, he will bring his servant Jacob under his economy to enjoy and benefit from Egypt. And before then, he will have sent one of Jacob's own, the one he has blessed, to be in charge of Egypt so that Egypt will be favorable to his own. So he sent Joseph ahead so that the people of Israel will not arrive in Egypt as beggars, but will arrive in Egypt as 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 um, privileged guests. And so Pharaoh will be honored to see the family of Joseph. Why? The prosperity of, Je of Egypt revolves around Joseph. So God is the God who is interested in the affairs. No, God is the God who sets up the affairs of men. Being, saying that he's interested in the affairs of men makes him a stranger. Makes him one who intrudes, who is unnecessarily trying to show his goodwill. He's the one who designs the affairs of men. And when the affairs of men have been skewed, have been corrupted by the wickedness of men, he's the one who shows that he's in charge of the affairs of men, who can then take power back, take responsibility back. And he said, I will set up for you shepherds. after my own heart to do it as I want it. All that God wants me to whisper to your ear this morning is that you have to look unto him. Today is the 14th day of the year. Look unto God as king. Look unto God as kingdom. Look unto God as the designer of the economy of his people. Why? In the midst of everything, God has his own economy for his people. That is what the Bible has talked about in diverse form. God goes to war for his people. God fights for his people. God blesses for his people. If you are Potiphar and his people have entered into your house or his person has entered into your house, he blesses you on account of his own. Just because, though you don't know him, but you happen to have his own in your midst, you enter into his economy. That is why, as soon, the scripture says, when Joseph came into his service, God blessed the household of Potiphar because of who? So, I want to tell you something. There are some people who are expecting things to be worse in Nigeria, in Akwaibom state. I expect things to be better because I am alive. I don't care if we wake up tomorrow and you tell me na the dollar to naira is 3,000 naira to one dollar. I am expecting it eventually to be better. Why? I am alive and serving God in this season. I expect God to bless a quiet home state because I am here. I expect Nigeria to be better under Tinubu because I am here. I don't know where I'm talking to you. Have I told you? He told me that I'm spiritual oasis. I am actively alive. I am not passively alive. I am actively alive. I expect your life to be better because of me. 
I expect every one of you who is connected to me by this call. And you know God sent me to this man as the man, the angel of his economy, of his government over me, a servant over me. I expect from that moment that you have that understanding and, that understanding and conviction and the working. I expect your life to be different because of me. Why? I have checked from A to Z. I am not here because of anything. I have been chosen. I have been appointed. I have been adopted. I have been accepted. I have been lifted. I have been blessed as God's own in order as, a, as an oasis, oasis to bless the surrounding. So I don't expect you to die young. I don't expect wombs that have not had children to keep on being barren. I don't expect one that doctor says you will soon die. I know I don't agree. I don't expect you to die. Are you, are you expecting to die? Then leave this place. If you are not expecting that your life will be better because God has his own economy and from the time of Abraham through the time of Jesus in the desert feeding 5,000 people feeding 7,000 people and gathering scraps. Why? He was the evidence of God's economy in that desert. I don't expect you to be stranded this year. If Naira becomes 5,000 to a dollar, there are people who would become wealthier. Why should you not be part of them? convince me. Once you are convinced once you have convinced me, leave and go to somewhere that you will be prepared for burial. Convince me this year with everything that will happen some people will build some people will occupy some people will rise, some people will be in charge, some people will be honored this year. If you are a child of God, tell me why you should not be one. No, I, I say, I challenge you. If you are a child of God, you open your mouth and tell me. Child of God means you know God is your father. God is your king. God is your Lord. God is your ruler. Tell me why you should not be among those who will be favor. Rise and get angry. Before you get angry, find out whether you are a child of God. If you are a child of God, this is the time to challenge your status. Being a child of God means you are a member of a kingdom where God is the king. That's what it means to be a child of God. Being a child of God is not a church matter. Too many people are reducing issues of being children of God to church. No! Church is the servant of the, the kingdom of God. Being a child of God means you are the child of a king. You are the king given birth to by a king, fathered by a king. And you are under the kingdom of the king. And this king happens to be your father. And Jesus Christ says everything that belongs to the father, they belong to me. If you are saved in Christ, it means you are son. It means the prayer of Jesus is your prayer. It means the words of Jesus become your word. If Jesus says, everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me, so should you say. If Jesus says, I and the Father are one, so should you say. Tell me why you should die young. Tell me why you should fail. If you don't have reason, then get angry. Say this year, you are getting better because of me. I thought you will open your mouth. Stop that kind of lazy talking. Open your mouth and speak like you are confident. Say 2024. I don't care about dollar, naira, exchange rates. You are getting better because I am here. Marriage. You are getting better. Because I'm here. Sons, you are showing up to marry my daughters. Because I'm here. Beautiful, beautiful godly girls. You are showing up for my sons to marry you. Because I'm here. Business, you are doing well. Academics, you are doing well. Why? 
I am the child of the king. I'm under the government of God. Don't prepare to die. The plan of God is overflow. Don't prepare to fail. The plan of God is overflow. Don't, pre don't prepare to fall apart. The plan of God is overflow. If you don't believe it, please don't come back to my church. Don't come back to the house of my God. Go to the house of a God who does not save. As I prayed this morning, the Holy Ghost reminded me that my God is the God who saves. The economy of God is salvation and Jesus is the King. That is why his name is called Jesus. He shall save his people. The economy of God is called salvation. Jesus ultimately is the mystery. There is healing to, for the sick. There are children for the barren. There is another womb to somebody who has defects in the womb. Breast cancer is reversed. Tumor is disappearing. Rise and speak. Say, I believe it. I am in the economy of my father. This month, I am doing what I have never done. You can lay your hands on the part of the body you want this word to speak to. I'm desperate for you. Be desperate for that economy. And uh, uh, I'm lost without you. <laughs> you will see it with your eyes. Sir, you will see it. If only you believe, you shall see it. If only you believe it, you shall see it. God is in charge and God is interested in his own. In the name of Jesus Christ, be seated. Change your plan. If you have not yet written your intention for the year, I see people writing love later and long later. This is not prayer, prayer request like I can maybe eh? that my people, my fathers and my parents used to write in those old days. What I expect you is item by item, if it's only one item. For the first time in a long time, I've written two intentions that are kept there. Just write this, 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 this. And I put the why. I'm desperately hungry to, sh to, show, to show him up, show him forth. So God is king and his rulership is the kingdom. And like every kingdom, there is economy. Jesus did not bring church. Church was arranged to take care of the kingdom. This is the kind of message that made me a very terrible person as a Catholic priest. Nobody ever believed I was a Catholic priest even in the circle of those who really knew I was ordained because I would say this kind of thing and the church is ecclesiastical. You cannot write. But I know scripture is right. And I was taught even in very basic church history. Jesus brought kingdom and the church was set up, arranged as a place where people are called out into the kingdom. The church is ecclesia called out. Those called out to God, they find their life expression in the church to serve the kingdom of God. You are called out. The scripture says he has transferred us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. He didn't say to the church. To the kingdom of light where we have redemption, even the forgiveness of our sin. So the church then becomes the body of the called out. Called out unto God's kingdom. Overseen 
administered in the church. So Jesus brought the kingdom. And if you talk about kingdom, then you talk about king. God is king. Because church, you can explain church. Do everything in church and God is not involved. You can play church, have a successful, beautiful church that God is not involved. Now we are beginning to hear the mighty people should defend the faith. They are beginning to talk about that. Same sex can be blessed. That is church. That's church. That's not kingdom. The kingdom will tell you, go back to what he said. What did the king say? Church means we can, we can shift to, to suit us. So the Catholic church needs serious prayer. Because a foundation is laid for crisis. And it's going to engulf in the coming days. I've been very careful not to say this. But it pains me. Because when I make Catholic priest, I talk, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Catholic donated to do the work of God outside. So it hurts me when those who are supposed to keep the orthodoxy and maintain the word of the king. He say a man and a man can be given spontaneous blessing. Don't tell me any type of blessing. There is a problem. That's not kingdom. When we talk about kingdom, we fear the king. We don't speak language of the subject. We speak the language of the king. So I've been very careful with this. And I am not afraid of offending people saying this. In fact, I am licensed to offend anybody and everybody. Because I've been called by God. And everyone who is called is called by God. Let God judge us. Mark chapter 1 verse 14 and verse 15. Mark chapter 1 verse 14 and verse 15. Now after John was put in prison... This is the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And what did he say? Read it, everyone. Oh, no. Everyone, read it out. And the kingdom of God is what? It means our hand. When you talk about it, our hand is here. It's close by is accessible. Now when we talk about the kingdom of God, it's like saying the kingdom of Pesha. That means the rulership of Pesha. It's like saying the nation of Nigeria. And people are trying to say IPOP. The rulership of the independent people of Biafra. That's what people have been saying. When they say no work on Monday, they are trying to say the rulership, the government, the kingdom of the indigenous people of Biafra, they are here, therefore don't move out. It means it affects you. And when you are traveling into that enclave, and it is Monday when they used to enforce it, I don't know what has happened to them now. It means you have to pack, you have to wait and observe a Sabbath by force. Why? The rulership of the indigenous people of Biafra in agitation. Not recognized though, but there is a fight. And they say don't pass and you don't pass. So when Jesus Christ said the kingdom of God is at hand, it means the rulership of God is at hand. Which means because it's at hand, what should not move, should not move. What should move, should move. It means God and the rulership of God is available to affect your life. Available to affect your marriage. Available to affect the way you live. Affect your economy. Affect your life. Stand up. Shout the kingdom of God. Is here. Available to affect me. Say the economy of God. The economy of God's kingdom. Is here. Available to touch my life. If you understand, say, I understand. So that's what he says. Say, the rulership of God as king. Not God as creator. Sir, the creator of your wristwatch. 
Normally, should not be the ruler of your wristwatch. Except that smart watches have changed the game. In those days, you buy any wristwatch. From the time you buy, your relationship with the maker is gone. It works independently. But if you are using any smart wristwatch, I will use Apple, uh, Apple Watch. They control it. It means they are showing you how the kingdom of God works. From time to time, they will tell you updates. Update for box fixes, for security. If you don't update, certain services will no longer work well. It's the mimicking of the kingdom of God. God does not create you and throws you away. God creates you and rules over you. And as ruler, he establishes his economy over you. That means in the time of crisis, he's still over you. And there are updates that will make you walk in the time of that economic crisis as if there is no problem. Am I communicating? That's what Jesus brought. He said, God as king is at hand. It means nearby, within you, around you, to affect you, to interrupt, to distort and disturb situations. So, when you walk with God as king, it means you submit to his rulership to affect your life. So God can show up in his government and say to the one that is bound to die and deserves to die, say this one, go home. He said, go home, but it's wrong. He said, I say he should go home. Go home, that's all. No explanation. The scripture says, who can say, what are you doing when he's saving? When he saves somebody, nobody can ask him question. What are you doing? When Jesus Christ sent his disciples to go and untie a donkey, they say, when they ask you, what is that you are doing? Tell them. What did he tell them to say? Say the master wants it. He didn't say the son of Mary wants it. Master means Lord. Means ruler. The ruler wants it. It means the kingdom of God demands that the life of this donkey be affected. And the scripture says it's a donkey that has never been used. That means if you have never been used, if you have never borne fruit, if you have never been of any, because until you are used, you have no reward, you have no praise. It is what is used that is rewarded. And the kingdom of God breaks out and affects you. They say, you, I appoint you to do this. And people will say, but there are others who are better qualified. They say, the master wants it that way. This year, the kingdom of God will disrupt the flow of human plans and single you out for favor in the name of Jesus. Should there be somebody who is too ignorant to question this? I say God is king with majesty and robed. God is king and let the whole world tremble. Yak That is it. That is the herald of the kingdom. So the Lord is in this place. 
let everyone be silent before him. Let cancer. So that is what Jesus was saying. He said, the kingdom of God is near. It means the servants of the kingdom, they go ahead. Wherever he's there, he announces. Who are the ones singing in Isaiah chapter 6? Is it your father or my mother that sang? They are the servants of the kingdom. You say, he is holy. He is holy. He is holy. He is the lowly. The Lord God. Sabbath. Heaven and earth. That's, it. That's how cancer disappears in his sight. That is how you tell us. You tell us is reposition for birth. That is how the womb is reconstructed and made afresh. That is how blood, leukemia, disappears in the blood. That is how tumor disappears in the blood. He said, The Lord is in His only place. The Lord is in His only place. Let all the air be sad. Is in his holy temple. The Lord. Raise your hands. Is in his holy temple. Let all. Silent be let all the earth <laughs> be silent before be silent. I rebuke death. Be silent before him. I rebuke death. Be silent before him. I rebuke death. Be silent. Raise your voice. Speak in the kingdom. Say be silent. Noises in my spirit. Be silent. Noises in my soul. Be silent. Noises in my office. Be silent. Noises of witchcraft. Be silent, noises of the marine. Be silent, noises of the cult. Be silent. Hallelujah, Shendelia. Sickness, be silent. Witness, be silent. Sin and iniquity. Be silent. Speak in the Holy Ghost. Rebuke accident. Say be silent. You cannot wait for the devourer to arrive. Visit the devourer. Tell the devourer. Be silent. This is miscarriage. Tell miscarriage. Be silent. Tell poverty. Be silent. Tell shame and nakedness. Be silent. Be silent. God is king. Be silent. Witchcraft kingdom. 
my God is king. He is the king. Be His angels are on your compound. His angels are in your ancestry. His angels are in your family. His angels are in your compound. Your business premises. His angels are in your offices. They are everywhere. Say this the shape of yesteryears, this time, distress and confusion, this time, defilements in masturbation, addiction to promote pornography, this time. You are the king above all the earth. You are the king far above all the earth. You are the king far above the darkness. You are the king above all cancer, all tumor, cabio, osio. You are the king, and you are above my shame and death lay your hand sickness is being healed you are the king and you are above all the obstacles cabio hey. cabio You are not preparing to die, are you? You are not preparing to be forgotten, are you? You dare not. You are not preparing to fail, are you? God is king. His kingdom is here. Human conditions have been invaded. The kingdom of politics have been overthrown. Oh! <laughs> I will a thousand be overthrown by one man. I will do people chase ten thousand except that God was there. Oh, 
roaring fire oh look at him face to face he lives in unapproachable light he is my king shout Jesus So, when we are talking about God, kings and presidents are not good enough to be his house boys. So you dare not mention my God and mention a governor. So you know, you dare not mention my God and mention the name of a president. He can make them wear diaper in their 50s. It can lull them to sleep and they lose their speech. And they cannot write their will. And Jesus said, the time of God as king is here. It means get ready for intervention. Get ready for disruption. Get ready for explosion. Get ready for divine explosion. Shout Jesus! Aka Akaya Aka Jigova Nemema Eyebuya Isi Kenu Aka Aka <laughs> Raise your voice. Raise your hand. Shout it. Aka. 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 The hands, the rights, and no one can reach. Hallelujah. <laughs> As I am, as I am speaking, deliverance is complete. As I am speaking, what you could not do, you can do it now. Get out and do what you could not do. The hand of God, 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 the hand of God. Sing it out. The hand. The hand that holds you. That high Try and be seated. Pay attention to what Jesus said in verse 15. Just pay attention. Just pay attention. And this is what he said in verse 15 of Mark chapter 1. The time is fulfilled. The word fulfilled means complete. Fulfilled means it is done. That means 
if you have been waiting for deliverance, you are waiting for the time of deliverance to be fulfilled. It means once the time is fulfilled, delivered. A woman who is pregnant is waiting for the time to be fulfilled. Once the time is fulfilled, it now becomes, why has she not put to birth? So what Jesus is saying is that everything that has been in pregnancy, everything that has been in waiting, health issues that have been waiting for healing to come, the time is complete. The time is fully fulfilled. Why? The, God, the time of God as king is now. Which means the moment you encounter God as king, time for every blessing is fulfilled. Why? In his economy, I told you economy has to do with arrangements, distribution of resources to cater for those who are in the oil costs involved in the household. Whether the household is a national household, which we can call national economy or state household or state economy. So he's saying the kingdom of God. So God carries, God is his central bank. God is his mortgage bank. God is his immigration. God is his custom service. Everything pertaining to life and godliness in earth and heaven. They are in his rulership. That is his economy. That means if you have issues with immigration and the kingdom of God steps in. The immigration service of the kingdom of God takes over. And so somebody can now apologize to you. He said we don't know what happened. And this woman knows it. This woman sitting down here knows it. Yeah. How people can apologize. Because the administration of God as king stepped in. And his own immigration and state department stepped in and said, by the way, we are in correspondence. How dare you keep say we are sorry. Don't, don't trouble us. These things are real. My work this year is to bring you into the reality of this mystery. That's the only relationship I have with you. That's the only reason I need you in church. That's the only reason I ask you to bring people to church. That's the only reason you go out in publicity. Go out for soul winning. God has told us, go out. The time is fulfilled. God has told us, go out. We can no longer stay here. We have everything we need. In the economy of God to change souls. Bring millions. Bring hundreds of millions. Bring the entire world. Why? Time is fulfilled. Let me shock you. The last things Jesus talked about after he rose from the dead, he was still talking about kingdom. He was talking about the economy of God. Acts of Apostles chapter 1, verses 1, 2, 3. Acts of Apostles chapter 1, verses 1, 2, 3. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, he through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days, and speaking of the things completed. Telling to the rulership of God. Because the disciples were about being thrown into the kingdoms of the world. Roman Empire was about coming after them. The name of Jesus was to mark them out to be killed and destroyed. So he told them about the kingdom of God. That is how Peter would slip between soldiers and an angel, a messenger, just one messenger from the kingdom, not two. One messenger appeared. Who opened the door for you? Say, we don't need doors. Where did you get permission from? He said, we grant permission for death, for one to die. So if we are the givers of permission, we don't need permission from anyone. Peter, wait. Uh, Peter said, wait, am I dreaming or am I saying, say, that's not an issue. Stand up. Put on your clothes. And he stood up. Every chain of man fell apart. One messenger of the king came. One. That one carried what it takes to break the first chain, the second chain, the every chain. 
And that one has what it takes to keep the guards asleep. That one guard, that one messenger has what it takes for the first door to be opened by itself. With apologies, I'm sorry we keep your people. And the second door to do follow suit, to bow and say sorry, we kept your people. And the main gates to be opened in apologies, sorry, we kept your people. And all the guards permitted to see without seeing. One messenger. When one messenger comes, he cannot take away tumor and leave glaucoma. He does not give you a child and not bring to birth. He does not give you a beginning and allow you to stranded in between. Allow you to be stranded in between. Is the Alpha and Omega. Just one messenger of the kingdom. So Jesus told them of the kingdom. Why? They were about being thrown into the kingdom. He said, when you stand before kings, do not worry. Your father shall give you what you will say. That means you will talk like king unto king. Why? You are the representative, the representative of the king. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't serve church. Church serves the kingdom. So we are not here because of a man. We are here because there is the God who is the king. And there is the king whose economy cannot fail. And when he wants to take care of extraordinary ministers of his kingdom, he said, go to where people are dying. There is no money. There is no food. Go there so that because of you, you will bless them. I've been given commission to bless those who are preparing to die this year. He told me I'm spiritual oasis. If you believe it, it's good for you. If you don't believe it, I agree. But I cannot deny my name. I talk this way because I serve the king. And my designation in the kingdom is that I'm a king. Only a king represents a king. A royal represents royal. Slaves don't represent citizens. So I'm telling you last things. And it's the kingdom. The first thing that Jesus spoke about in his preaching kingdom. And as he was wrapping up, he said, as I told you at the beginning, the kingdom. When the kingdom of marine rises against you, remember you serve the God who rules over the affairs of the marine and the witches and wizards. There is no place for failure. He does not go to deliver you and there is negotiation. Why, in every kingdom, there is what we call budgets allocation. The administration of budgets. Defense usually takes priority. Education. I don't know the percentage of, it, of that is allocated to education in Nigeria. Because some of people who are in charge, there are questions about whether they are educated or not. <clears throat> so we don't even know. <clears throat> we don't know, <clears throat> excuse me. We don't know whether, what percentage is about education. Buhari, we are questioning whether he, he had secondary school living certificate. So I don't know what was the budget allocation. Thank God for Tinubu. We are not too sure of too many things. So, but we are not too sure. Even at the state level, we are still not too sure of too many things. Okay, sorry. Maybe. So we don't know issues of budgetary allocation for education. But in the kingdom of God, everything in details. Everything in details. Everything in details. As you rise this morning, you're going to stand and lift up your two hands. Say, from the beginning of the plan of Jesus to the end of the plan of Jesus, I submit in the midst of the economy of Nigeria. In the midst of the economy of a quiet state, I submit to a budget. I submit to the economy of God. I submit to the economy of God. And in order to submit to the economy of God, a very simple thing, please, wherever you are, just lift up your two hands. His name is Jesus. He's the salvation of God. Jesus means God saves and salvation is the economy of God. When you are bound, the salvation of God is economy says there are resources for you to be unbound. So as you lift up your two hands, just call Jesus. Now that Jesus means repentance to those in sin. So you go ahead and repent. 
Say on the 14th day of the year, I'm not moving in with familiar sins, with unfamiliar sins. I'm not moving in with the plan of yesterday's, with the old ways of doing things. Say in this new year, this new calendar year, I'm accepting a new budget, a new economy, and it is that of God. Whether in the state there is provision for me or in the nation there is provision for me, it does not matter but I am standing here and I'm asking you Lord, forgive me. I accept number one from the economy of this country that you rule, the economy of your kingdom, I accept mercy for my sins. I accept mercy for my sins. Say, I repent from sin. I repent from sin. I repent from sin. I repent from sin. Say, I cannot be afraid of what others fear. Is it Isaiah 8, verse 12, or otherwise? Look for it. Do not fear what these people fear. Say, Lord, I turn to you. Isaiah 8, verse 12. Say, so from today, I don't call conspiracy everything that these people call conspiracy. Say, so Lord, I do not fear what these people fear. I do not dread it. Say, so from today, I choose to fear you. I don't fear what people fear about witches and wizards. I don't fear what people fear about a cult. I don't fear what people fear about the marine. I don't fear what people fear about Satan. I don't fear about what people fear. Fear in any form. In violence, in insecurity, in kidnapping, in, in robbery. Keep that scripture there. Let somebody speak. Say, you alone I fear. I turn from sin because I fear you. I turn from evil because I honor you. Say, I turn away. And consecrate myself. That in this life, my resources, my finances will honor you. My life will honor you. Do not call conspiracy. What they fear. What they call. Say, I don't call. Whatever the doctor says will kill me. I don't, kill, I don't call you my killer. Whatever people used to threaten me, I don't call you threat. Say, I already, I have already submitted to God as king. And his kingdom is here. It means his kingdom will fight my battle. It means his kingdom will provide for my needs. Lift up your two hands and say, I submit into your kingdom. I submit to your kingdom. And Jesus is your kingdom. I accept forgiveness. I accept mercy. I accept lifting. I accept help. Not die by things that kill people. Look at that scripture again. Say, I don't call conspiracy everything that these people say. I am under the kingdom, not among these people. I don't fear what these people fear. Raise your hands. Say, what brings these people down will not bring me down. In 2024, what buries people will not bury me. Ah! How can I fear God and then fear what these people fear? 
How many God there are? There is only one God, one Lord, one baptism, one faith. Don't fear. I don't. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. Say, Lord, I regard you as holy. Come and reign in my heart. Reign in my soul. Reign in my spirit. I'm not expecting little things this year. I cannot, I cannot answer this call that God put upon me in little things. I am not negotiating for little things this year. I am not preparing for little things this year. I cannot serve the God who is the king that causes kingdom to tremble and faint away. And then I measure little. Raise your two hands. Say, I change my expectation. I don't factor in the price of fear and desire. I factor in grace. I factor in mercy. I factor in favor. I factor in intervention. I factor in power. Our God is the God of power and might. Say, my God is the God of power and might. Say, my God is the God of power and might. Say, my God is the God of power. Let my God send his angels on Iran. Lift up your two hands. My God is sending his angels on Iran to the things you fear. Let what you fear be destroyed. Let what you fear be killed. Let what you fear be overthrown. 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 Shout Jesus! brought us God as king lift our two hands this God is king his army fights for us his air force the fights for us in the air his naval forces the fight for us in the waters marine cannot dare us witches and wizards cannot dare us in the air or cult cannot dare us in the land Poverty cannot dare us. His central bank provides for us. He says, I am El Rafa. When you need healing, I will provide. He says, I am El Rafa. I am El Jire. I provide for my own. I provide for my own. Hey, Uboru, Akanamde. Oh, Ubar. Mi bongo. Mi bongo. Be seated. Bring out your oil. Let me share with you. As I sat in the presence of God yesterday. God took me to a season in 2006 that he visited us with this scripture. Psalm 66. And he told me, this is the definitive time. I bring you into the economy of God that I represent. So by the anointing, I am bringing you through seasons. Seasons of 50 years, Seasons of hundred years, season of ancestral years. The anointing, anointing shall take you through seasons and phases. And the anointing will drop you in that season that has a name. Psalm 66, bring out your oil while you sit. 
verse 10 to 12. For you, O God, tested us. You refined us like silver. Pay attention as I read. For you, O God, tested us. That's a season. After that, you refined us like silver. Not a season. Not a years of years. You brought us into prison. Another season. And laid burdens on our backs. Another season. You can see the scripture is talking about seasons and years. Ten years of being tested. Thirty years. I talked to you about it last year, last week. Thirty years of going through years and years. Being tested. Being refined. And men. You cause men. You let men right over our heads. Go back to that verse 11. You brought us into prison. A time that you can only stay and hear people shout and sing. But it doesn't look like it's your song. Because you are imprisoned. In the same office with others. But limited, structured and restricted. A season. Let burdens on our backs. Anytime people respond to you is about heavy pain. Trouble. Not a season. It just looks like one trouble hands you over to another trouble. The Holy Spirit woke me up into this yesterday. It's a long time. And no one can remember. Bishop Joseph can remember in the pastoral center for one full year into another year. This was scripture. I didn't know. I was a Catholic. I didn't know what God was about doing. It was during the 40 days. This time in 2016 that God broke this word out and this word refused to leave. I just couldn't know but I knew something was happening. The spirit. It became the word of the family. You brought us into prison. Let burdens on our backs. You let men, allowed men, men that normally should not but you allowed them People who normally should not, but you allow them. And I just want to let you know, if anybody did it, it's because he was allowed. It's a season. Just guy said, you would not have done anything to me if you were not given the right. Say, don't you know I have right? Say, you don't have right over me, except he was granted you. So it was whatever it is this year you are not going to blame anybody they were allowed those who said you should not be promoted those who rose against your posting that will have helped you those who caused you pain that made you bitter they were allowed they have been allowed this is the greatest language. One of the greatest things God has taught me in the language of his economy is that I cannot blame anybody for my situation. Because no man can touch me if God has not permitted it. I serve the God of the angels. He's called Yahweh Sabaoth. It means the God of hosts. I have a son that is named Food Mekong Yahweh. The Sabaoth of Yahweh. The God of, the host of God. So I am a witness that the host of God, they are enough to preserve every detail of your life so that no harm will befall you and you don't strike your foot against the stone. If anybody says weak is because they were allowed, don't, don't give them glory. Don't make them feel bloated and arrogant. Don't let them see your tears. 
wipe your tears when you cry to God. When you see them put on powder, put tido, make them angry at your laughter. Why? Because you have not given them the permission to think that they have power over you. Sir, everyone that walked against me fetch water for my promotion. You know it? Everyone. People said, we want to let you know that as long as this is consent, if you don't pass through us, you don't pass through anywhere. And I've been stubborn early because I was called by the living God. It broke into my life. I was not preached to into salvation. No man led me to Christ. It broke into my life. I know there is God. So I swore too early. Say, the God who called me cannot save me. Cannot help me. Let no man help me. I don't need a man to help me. Every man that has ever helped me has been appointed by my God. Because God uses people. When he sends an angel to bless you, an angel will speak to a man. A man will come and bless you. And when a man blesses you, give God thanks first before you give thanks to that person. Don't forget that it is God that speaks favor to the heart of a man. The same man that favors you is wicked unto another. So you honor God and then be thankful and grateful before man. You let men ride over our heads. You wash them as they rode on us. They thought they were the ones who had power. But you know you are the one who set them up. And you also have a limit that you can tell them enough. And their plans go frustrated in Sunday. Serve a mighty God. No. When I say mighty God, a God who is mighty in the sense of almighty. All the might belongs to his might. See, we went through fire and water. And fire was boastful and water was arrogant. As if they were powerful over us. But he said, when you pass through the waters, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, it shall not burn you. Why? I am the one overseeing what you go through is a face. It's a face. This one too that you are going through is a face. I have announced his kingdom to you on the 14th day of the year. And I have disrupted everything that caused you to fear in the name of Jesus. Can I announce to the ears of seven people, I have disrupted your schedules with your doctors. Your mandatory schedule. A kind of schedule that if you miss it, your life is at stake. I have disrupted it. The next time, seven people in this place, seven people, seven, the next time you meet your doctor, you will say, it is no longer needful for you to be meeting me. In the name of Jesus, stand to your feet, mention any other area by the kingdom of my God that I announced, I disrupt it. I disrupt diabetic movement. I disrupt hypertensive movement. I disrupt the financial insolvency. I disrupt it. I disrupt fear and worries. I disrupt issues of the eyes. I disrupt marital issues. I disrupt issues against pregnancy. I disrupt insecurity. I disrupt poverty. I disrupt hardship. I disrupt the issues of the man in the university that tells you you cannot graduate. May the hand of my God strike the man who says you will not graduate. May the hand of my God strike the head of a man who says you shall not graduate. In the name of Jesus. Somebody will have stroke but before the stroke will be perfect he will sign your letter 
But he will have stroke and live long so that he will never say over my dead body over another person. Lift up your two hands. I didn't come today to tell you about a man. I told you 30 years ago I began this journey. It's not a man that has kept me. I have seen all sort of things. I've had many occasions I gave up on myself. I've had moments that I told God, I'm angry with you because you disappointed me. And God said nothing. And I've reached a point that I can tell somebody, my God is almighty. I came to enforce a disruption. A disruption. Ah! the steps of those who are planning to bury a young person have been disrupted in the name of Jesus. The footsteps of those who are planning to bury I disrupt that burial is cut in the name of Jesus. Shall not bury. Disruption. Lift up your two hands. Disruption. Shout disruption. disruption. Disruption is taking place in the dream world and the physical world simultaneously in the name of Jesus. We see that God disrupts. God disrupts. A woman came to my office the other time and said, God asked me to sow this seed. And as I took the seed from her, I turned. And I've always seen that house girl. But for the first time, she dropped the seed. My eyes were open. She said, the house girl, come. And he came. She said, give me your hand. Give me your hand. And I anointed her. She left. And the person came back and talked about all the terrible, scary dreams she could not believe she was involved in. Refused to talk about it. Mention it. Bordering on marriage, on the husband, on her life, and all of that. That same night that they walked away from this church, the final decision was taken. And the dream she saw manifested physically. And as she came back, they, they had pretension. She came, a young person with that pretension, who gave it to you? All sort of sickness. He said, I don't know. They just happened because somebody was living in her house and sitting on her head to pound yam. A seed release gave opportunity for a sick nature to be appended. The following day, she came back yesterday. Said, for the first time, my health have gotten back. And told me, I was so scared. I couldn't even talk about it. I thought the things I saw were not real. And this is what happened. And my life just changed. I said, that is it. That is it. I'm talking about interruption. That was leading to something. But interruption took place. This week, I declare the kingdom interruption. Your hands lifted. Accident that was to happen. A child that was to fall from a height and cause issue. Interruption in the name of Jesus. Interruption. 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 Be seated. So the anointing today is called what? Interruption. 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 He said, you let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. What happened? No, 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 no. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. After the fire, after the water, what happened? brought us to overflow. We have reached the overflow. We have reached the overflow. We have passed through men riding on our heads. We have passed through being tested. 
We have passed through being refined as silver. We have passed through the fire and water. We have passed through being put in prison. We have come to the place of abundant race. Rise to your feet and lift up that oil open. Say, I have come through my seasons. I have come through my seasons. I carry in my hands the anointing to close up seasons, to change seasons. Open that oil and begin to speak. Say, this is the disruption of seasons. The disruption of seasons and the closure of seasons. I come to the place of closure. I disrupt season. We are not to begin to speak in the Holy Ghost. Begin to speak in the Holy Ghost. Speak into the oil. Whatever you say, I shall confirm it. Men no longer ride on my back. Halabosh. Satala Kapolia. Speak. Speak like overflow. Say, I have arrived at the overflow. In Auburn, we have arrived at the overflow. I have come through the test. I have come through being refined like silver. I have been brought through the prison. I have been brought through being burdens being laid on my back. I have been brought through people riding over my head. I've been brought through fire and water. Now I have been brought to a place of abundance. I have been brought to overflow. I have been brought to overflow. I have been brought to overflow by the kingdom. By the economy of the kingdom. Something is leaving you. Something is disappearing. Something is falling apart. Something is coming out of your body. Something is coming out of your eyes. Something has left your mind. Strange voices are quiet. Something that has been crawling in your womb. Something that has been moving in your stomach. A voice that has been making you uncomfortable in your body. In your stomach. Silence. Be quiet. Go and never come back. They are gone. They are gone. They are gone, they are gone. I confirm your speaking. This oil uh, is abundance. This oil is overflow. The disruption of poverty. The disruption of limitation. The disruption of addiction. The disruption of limitation. The di disruption of darkness. This is disruption unto the kingdom of death. Uh, this is disruption to those who are coming to bury. This is disruption to kidnapping hands and rubbing hands. This is the disruption unto accident and calamity. This is disruption and this is the eruption. Eruption of favor. Eruption of honor. Eruption of power. Eruption of blessing. Eruption of glory. Eruption of wonder. I bless this to prosper. I bless this for anointing. In the name of Jesus. A little of it in your right palm and place it on your forehead. You have 60 seconds. Begin to prophesy, speaker. Disruption of the plan of Satan and the eruption of the plan of God by the anointing. If you didn't come with oil, if there is not somebody who wants to show you any help, you can take it and then anoint yourself. Otherwise, you wait for next Sunday. This is the third anointing. Ubaro Akanamda 
Mi bon bon que set. Uboro. Omo yo ara gara. Ndinam ke yo. God is healing somebody of chest pain. Heart conditions are changed. New kidney, new livers. Tell God I will testify. Something is shifting in your bone. Lay your hand. Lay your hand. The other hand should be on some part, some, some part of your body. I use your hand to restore your bones, restore your joints, restore your eyes, restore your womb, restore your kidney, restore your liver, restore your breast, restore, 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 restore. I break the yoke, I break addiction, I break affliction, I break addiction, I break affliction, I break addiction, I break limitation, I break the low yoke, I break limitation. I break the small place. Come out. Come out of the prison. Come out. Come out of the limit. Come out. Come out of the stronghold. Come out. Come out of the floor. Come out. Come out of death. I raise you from the dead. 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 Eyes can see. I command your eyes to see now. I command your ears to hear now. Let your mouth speak now. Let your mind be restored. Be restored, be restored in the name of Jesus Christ.